Welcome to the Enough Cutting Board series. I'm Nick. Last time, we decided that everybody already has a cutting board and you probably don't need to make them one. I present new findings. Not only does everybody already have one, but I've got a secret for you. Your cutting boards are too pretty. Nobody wants to use them as a cutting board. You know what everybody does have? Dirty drawers. And I don't mean pants. Do your drawers look like this? Chances are, one of them in your house does. Here's a gift that people will actually use. As established in the last video, step one is to remove any unnecessary items like this stupid useless rod thing. Then you're gonna wanna measure your drawers. I'm an inseam 32, in case you were wondering. Most cabinets have a standard dimension. I'm gonna shoot for a width of about 15 and a half. And we're gonna build this in sort of a special way so that it's easily customizable in case your drawers fit a little tighter than mine. There's something about woodworking that turns us all into hoarders. We inherently make boards shorter, which leaves even shorter boards left over. And throwing away a nice offcut will certainly get you beat up at the lumber yard. All that to say this is a great project to use your scraps on. I'm using a bandsaw in this case, but rest assured all of this can be done on a table saw. For several reasons, the table saw is not the preferred method. But according to this guy, I'm not properly credentialed to tell you about safety. He does, however, find me cute and entertaining, so thank you, random internet guy. When building any sort of box or case, the first thing to take into consideration is function. Make sure it's gonna do what you want it to do. The next thing I like to focus on is the weight of each individual component. Parts that are too thick will result in something that feels clunky and bulky. If that's your style, that's great. I like to build levels, layers, so that it goes from sturdy and thick on the outside to thin and balanced on the interior components. As with anything, especially in woodworking, there are many ways to skin the proverbial cat. Poor cat. My fleshing tool of choice for this project is a panel router because I have one and there's really just no easier way to make a mortise and tenon. With both mortise and tenon cut, I double check the fit before reenacting my prom night. Once the frame is assembled, each side is labeled to keep it in order since they are fit to one another and I can begin to build the bottom. This panel could be hardwood, but I've chosen to use some eighth inch Baltic birch plywood. This whole making gifts for people that they don't actually use as intended uh, reminds me of a story. Back a few years ago when I first started woodworking, I was broke, so I decided that I was gonna make everyone's Christmas presents. And the two that I was really excited to build were a couple of valets, jewelry boxes for my parents. I had never built anything so intricate before. It's been hours. I remember I was up till 3 a.m. on Christmas Eve, finishing these things, and I showed up the next morning, Christmas morning, one tired little elf. But they went over well, and everyone liked their gifts. Fast forward to my wedding, when the entire sum of my wife and I's families were over at my parents' house, my mom was so excited to show everyone the uh, woodworking skills I had picked up. So she rushed everyone to the kitchen to show off the spice rack that I had spent 10 minutes on and screwed into her cabinet. Moral of the story is pretty functional stuff makes for poor gifts. All right, at this point, we've got some layers, we've got some levels, but essentially we've got a box and a box. That's still gonna be a mess, so let's go ahead and subdivide the box. Because the only thing better than boxes are boxes and boxes, or boxes and boxes and boxes. Box Inception. The 
The location of the divisions is totally arbitrary. I found two inches to be a good width for a general cubby. Since I decided to eyeball the spacing here, I found it helpful just to tape the two pieces together and cut them at the same time. Rather than asking before the video starts and before I've offered any value propositions of substance, I'd like to request that if you have found something helpful, funny, or entertaining in the video so far and think I've earned it, I would love if you'd consider subscribing. And thank you. In case you hadn't noticed, I've used very little measuring tools here because all the pieces are relative to one another. I could have taken some calipers to the planer, but I find any excuse to fine tune with a hand plane a good excuse. Gucci, baby. All right, let's see if it fits in the drawer and see if there's any tweaks we need to make. So far, so good. No trimming necessary on the little ears we left overhang on either side, but I think there's some room for improvement on these cavities. They're a little bit deep for my sausage fingers to get in and grab a dimmy toss spoon. Giggity. Once the access curve is fared out and smooth, I take yet another opportunity to use my hand planes. Whenever I get a question, I always assume that if one person's gonna ask it, a hundred people are gonna think it. And the other day I got a question about when to sand and when to plane. Typically anything that is less than or equal to the width of my plane, I'll plane. Mostly because the surface finish that it leaves is absolutely remarkable and sandpaper can't touch that. Da -na -na -na. Can't touch that. Especially considering how quick a few swipes with a hand plane is compared to working through all the sandpaper grits. I also like that with planing, you sort of burnish the surface. And this works especially well for finishes that produce a film, like shellac. Or, in this case, I'll probably finish in a few coats of wax. I'm running on the assumption here that everybody likes a tidy drawer as much as I do. Let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this little project and let me know if you end up gifting it to a loved one this season. I'd love to know if unlike cutting boards, they found this ugly enough to actually use. And it doesn't have to just be your silverware drawer. I love it for my pens and markers, my chisels, and all throughout my favorite tool chest. Appreciate your time and don't forget to hit subscribe on your way out. Catch you on the next one. Peace.